Well, the crowd has been already worked into a frenzy. Both uh, the Golden Corral and the uh, Redland Red Sea are on their feet. We're ready for the main event tonight. It is the Cedar Cliff Boys against the Redland Boys here on ABC 27. Great match again with Charlie Fordy and Todd McCall. Good girls game, but uh, we've really been looking. We've earmarked this one for quite a while now. Let's talk about both these teams because Cedar Cliff is always impressive. Redland's got one of the best players in the area. Uh, guys, give me your thoughts. Well, I want to start with Cedar Cliff. I mean, size, power, outside shots, inside game. They lost it. They lost a tough one at home to Her uh, Hershey, excuse me. But tonight, this is where they come back and get it. But there's a couple things I want to give a little shout out to Noel Arup. He likes to get out and be active on that one three one at the top sometimes. I think tonight, Charlie, to be effective, they need to, he needs to stay home a little bit. Yeah, Redland has a strength, and that is in the guards. You got the Antonelli brothers. Uh, tonight has to be a big game for them because. Although Redland does return three starters from last year's team, Nieder, Nieder Thurder, uh, who got hurt, who was going to help supply some size for Mike Zingari around the basket, is not here this year. Mike Zingari's got to have a big game. Redland is at home. They have the Red Sea. Cedarcliff has the Golden Crown. The bottom line is this is a rivalry, and you can't predict this one on paper. I think at home, don't plan on going to break because it's going to be every possession, I believe, in this game. Let's talk about, from an emotional standpoint, we're going to look at the keys to the game here, uh, our Penn National Insurance keys to the game. First of all, for Cedar Cliff, uh, you got to keep Mike and Gary away from the boards. Yeah, I mean, right there is the key. I mean, that's why he's a leading scorer. I think, you know, too, Charlie, is limiting those second shots. Get out. Cedar Cliff needs to get the rebound and get out in the lanes and get some easy buckets tonight. And last but not least, when you get up and down the floor, good things happen. You draw foul trouble. Yeah, Cedar Cliff needs to make this a track meet. Uh, naturally, Redland's got th their game plan as well. We're going to take a look at this now. And here's our Redland keys to the game. You got a key on Logan Stump, and that's what Hershey did very effectively after 19 points going in the third quarter. They were able to hold him and win that basketball game. The Antonelli brothers must defend and score tonight. They must figure out a way to get some penetration to make life easier on the big guy around the basket. I want to talk about this game from an emotional standpoint because you've coached, you've played in them, when you get this kind of a crowd and you're worked up and all these kids know each other, we also know about some of the scenarios they've talked about about merging these programs. I don't think that's on the kids' minds. But talk about playing under control tonight. Well, that's the first and foremost. You have to forget about everything. And I know Coach Slayton has talked to his Redland team, and I know Coach Rowell has said the same thing. Guys, settle down, play basketball, pretend they're not here. But I tell you what, when you hit a big shot, and Charlie Fortney, you know it. You've hit some big ones in your life. When you hit a big one, it's hard not to turn to everybody and go, what do you think? And let, I mean, shake some hands as you're running down that sideline. This is what high school sports is all about. This is what I miss. Yep. Uh, if Cedar Cliff Colts, aren't focused and prepared tonight. They may be 10 and one. Redland's gonna give them a wake up call, but I, 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 I'm, I'm betting that Cedar Cliff Colts are ready to play. Uh, Redland's gonna have to have some big games from some big players. Uh, and, and it's, again, it's gonna be one of those rivalries. The war on the West Shore is here, here again, folks. Todd, you're, we see this all the time with these two schools and you're in over that crowd. You know, a lot of times you'll see just one set of students at the home students, but rarely do you see this kind of an effort from both student bodies who were here when we got here to start, you know, the, to start talking about our production tonight. Oh, I talked to both groups, and the, the, the one thing they said is all bets are off. Even though some of them are friends, some of them are related. When you talk about a civil war, this is <laughs> civil war. They are related, but they said tonight we're not related. And you know what? They tried to clear the path so people can get up for just safety reasons. This is fun. Fun, Greg Mace. That's all I have to say. All right. We're looking forward to it. We've got uh, some more pregame coming up. We'll take a break. Todd, Charlie, and I'll be back as we continue. The opening tip-off is seven minutes and change away. It's High School Sports Live. It is the war on the West Shore. Cedar Cliff, Redland, coming up next. Hello, can I help you? Oh, no need to worry, Mrs. Smith. My grandfather is Russ Baylor himself and has been in business for over 30 years. At Russ's Auto and Trailer Sales, we have it all. We specialize in selling a complete line of trailers, a variety of used cars and campers. Our service department can do it all. And we even have a nice guy named Justin who answers the phone. And what do we tell him, Maddie? Nobody fusses at Russ's. 
For generations, Caterpillar has delivered innovative products that help customers build strong, profitable businesses. And for more than 60 years, Cleveland Brothers Equipment Company has been Pennsylvania's source for first-class Caterpillar equipment, service, parts, and rentals. With 26 locations across Pennsylvania, we've grown right alongside our customers, delivering on our commitment to provide a superior experience and maximum value. Cleveland Brothers Equipment Company, helping Pennsylvania prosper since 1948. All-state freshman Malia Tate DeFridis tore her ACL in a heated state playoff and her dreams seemed shattered. I tried to come back in and it wasn't working out. I thought that my basketball career was over. Getting an assist from the doctors at Arlington Orthopedic, Malia is ready to attack the hoop this season. It feels good when I jump and cut and stuff. It feels normal and the brace really helps me. To go from tears to a smile, it was, it was, it was just a beautiful thing. Got old electronics, such as a TV or computer to recycle? We've got your answer at the Dauphin County Recycling Center. E-cycling is quick, easy, and free for all county residents. You can also recycle old major appliances and other items safely at our center. Have questions? Call our helpful staff at the Recycling Center or check our website for more information. Recycling is now more convenient than ever. Join us in going green to protect our environment. Keep our earth clean and green. Wipe out waste and recycle into the sun for coverage of student athletes from Palmyra, Hershey, and Lower Dolphin. Drew Weedman and the Sun staff are dedicated to weekly coverage. Extra, extra, read all about West Shore student and team success with the growing popularity of the Carlisle Sentinel, the pace setter in Carlisle and West Shore Sports Review. Patriot News has covered the region of Harrisburg since 1854. From all-star selections to championship reporting, the leader in Central Pennsylvania sports news. Five minutes to tip, Cedarcliff, Redland, and a guy who knows a lot about this rivalry is standing by with Todd McCall. Gentlemen, I'm with Steve Zach. Steve, you're at LaSalle University right now, and I tell you what, standing beside you ought to have a tough time boxing you out, but I want to talk about the rivalry, not boxing out. What does this rivalry mean to the West Shore? It's probably, it's probably one of the greatest rivalries in high school sports. I, uh, I, I talked to Coach Lane today, I said, I said, man, being in college, this is, like, this is the one thing I really miss. I miss this atmosphere. Like this, this close, small gym, high school atmosphere, playing guys are down the road, it's just something special. I've got to ask you one question. Making the transition to Division I basketball, everybody talks about it. Steve, talk about the biggest difference you've seen in the game at that level. It's probably like I go from being one of the best players on my high school team to being like now with playing with every, everybody's good. I, I have to separate myself. So, I mean, I just work hard every day playing with some of the best guys in the country, and it's a, it's a, it's a unique opportunity for me, and I'm glad for it. Steve, can I get your prediction on the game? Uh, I got my boys from Redland. I got Redland by six tonight. <laughs> hey, gentlemen, we'll see if that holds. This is Steve Zach's Redland by six. Great. Well, it's great to see him at LaSalle as we watch a lot of the kids uh, from our area continue to play well in Division One, and uh, great to see him here uh, supporting his team. Some of the Cox brothers are here tonight. Our uh, football family, the Redland football family, I believe, are here. Uh, this place is, is jammed, and if you couldn't get in, we're glad you're with us here on ABC 27. Three minutes to go for tip-off of the National Anthem. We're getting set for the main event at Cedar Cliff and Redland, coming up next here on ABC 27. All-state freshman Malia Tate DeFridis tore her ACL in a heated state playoff, and her dreams seemed shattered tried to come back in and it wasn't working out. I thought that my basketball career was over. Getting an assist from the doctors at Arlington Orthopedic, Malia is ready to attack the hoop this season. It feels good when I jump and cut and stuff. It feels normal and the brace really helps me. To go from tears to a smile, it was, it was, it was just a beautiful thing. For generations, Caterpillar has delivered innovative products that help customers build strong, profitable businesses. And for more than 60 years, Cleveland Brothers Equipment Company has been Pennsylvania's source for first-class Caterpillar equipment, service, parts, and rentals. With 26 locations across Pennsylvania, we've grown right alongside our customers, delivering on our commitment to provide a superior experience and maximum value. Cleveland Brothers Equipment Company, helping Pennsylvania prosper since 1948. Got old electronics, such as a TV or computer to recycle? We've got your answer at the Dauphin County Recycling Center. 
E-cycling is quick, easy, and free for all county residents. You can also recycle old major appliances and other items safely at our center. Have questions? Call our helpful staff at the Recycling Center or check our website for more information. Recycling is now more convenient than ever. Join us in going green to protect our environment. Keep our earth clean and green. Wipe out waste and recycle. Advanced Tubes Premier AAU is on the rise. 32 teams last year featuring the top boys and girls basketball players from all over the region. Advanced Tubes offers 10 to 11 player rosters, guarantees playing time, all man-to-man -man style play, and every player gets professional skill training along with top quality AAU tournaments. Advanced Tubes has helped over 50 high school athletes get scholarships over the last five years. We call it AAU with a follow through. All right, as part of the warm-up, it's not only the players, it's the crowd, and Todd McCall is with the Red Sea. Todd? Gentlemen, I'm here in the Red Sea. I'm going to ride the roller coaster. They want to compete with Mechanicsburg's roller coaster, so here I go. Buckle up. Todd had his seatbelt on. Ah. I survived. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the Golden Corral, they don't, they're getting fired up over there. They want a response to this. Well, here's the introduction to the starting lineups. Boy, those those stands are, are durable because they've been through this quite a lot. And Cedar Club will be introduced first. Our officials tonight, old buddy Craig Bradley is with us, along with Brad Yinks and Tom Marpole, a crew we've had before, and we're glad to have them with us tonight. Glad you're with us here on ABC 27. This place is jam-packed, and if you couldn't get in, we're glad you're with us for the ride tonight. I'll tell you, Greg, not only do we have experienced teams to High School Sports Live tonight, we got experienced officials to High School Sports Live tonight, we got experienced student sections, I'll tell you what, we got you back tonight. Man, we're on, we're on a roll here. Well, this is, uh, this is a game that we uh, certainly penciled in when we uh, set the schedule up, and we've been here before, live and on tape, delay before, and uh, here in our third season, this has certainly become one of our best rivalries. Well, we look at these two teams also uh, going after Hershey, 2-3 in the standings. Hershey undefeated, but 4-1, Cedar Cliff and Redland. So certainly a big game. You look at Cedar Cliff, 10 and one overall in terms of the standings, they're, uh, they're right there. Kristen Majoke, Walker Martinez, Logan Stump, Noel LaRue, and Colton Lewis will be the starters for the Cedar Cliff Colts. Tell you what, Red Redland has started to catch some sort of rhythm. And it's gonna be interesting to see if that rhythm's uh, good enough to compete against this 10 and 1 Cedar Cliff Colts. Duke Antonelli, the first introduced. He's a 6'3 senior. Dominic Antonelli, a six foot sophomore. John Ford is also a sophomore guard. He's 5'8, an outstanding football player on this team. Tanner Hubbard, the 6'3 senior forward, and Redland's all time leading scorer. 6'9", senior headed to the East Carolina. Their coach, Scott Slayton. Cedar Cliff coach is Jimmy Rao. And this is the uh, ultimate in Central Pennsylvania high school basketball. And here is our national anthem.
whole rendition of our national anthem. The Redland students, we are uh, ready to play basketball. The chant of USA, USA from the Red Sea. They're very patriotic, and of course, their school nickname is the Patriots. There is Mike Zangari to jump center. You know, I, I you know, Greg, I know uh, our viewers at home and fans here don't aren't abreast of all the rumors and all the talk, but. You know, there's been a lot of talk that Cedarcliff's just going to roll over Redland tonight. But let me tell you something. You got a 6'9 Division One forward in the middle of the, the court there. That's something that Cedarcliff's going to have to tend, contend with tonight. And this is a rivalry. Uh, they're both 4-1 and one in the same division. This is this this is the division. And Scott Slayton does a tremendous job of preparing his team for this situation, as does Coach Jim Brown. So here we go, Redland in the home white to tip it up. And the tip is won by, goes out of bounds. So it'll be Cedar Cliff basketball to start. Chris Red joke will trigger it in. Redland in a 3-2 to start out. We're going to extend that. Try to get a hand on all the shooters, make it tough. Keep keeps and Gary in the back for rebounding. Hopkins. That's an uncharacteristic shot by Will Hopkins and a quick one. 1-3-1 one, one by or, uh, Boxing, okay. Man-to-man, -man, soft man to a uh, face guard on uh, Antonelli. Antonelli, Dominic, X-Factor tonight in my opinion. Patriots get the first loose ball. Duke Antonelli. And that's, that's that was a big key before this game. Todd pointed out as well that the Antonelli brothers, the, 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 the guards for Redline have to attack the basket, have to penetrate tonight. Uh, You watch Duke attacking. 35 seconds gone by, first quarter. And Duke Antonelli, the senior, will get one more. Well, these are some good shooters here for Redland. First point of the game belongs to Duke Antonelli. A little jittery on the first one. That's to be expected. No rule. Cedarcliff coming out, firing from outside. A little sloppy with the basketball. And a backcourt violation. Back to Redland. A lot of strategy here to start out. And Gary. <laughs> Opening four points belong to the Patriots. And Gary comes out leading the team, showing why he scored 1,500 points already for Redland. Sudikov <laughs> trying to figure the zone out, being very tentative. A rude baseline. Boy, Ford got hammered on the way down. Well, he's used to it. He gets tackled on the football field. He run, running back as a freshman. Had a great year for the Redland Patriots. The sophomore, I'm sorry. Ford is guarded by McJoke. Zangari is called for travel. I understand that uh, Mike Bullock pointed out to us that uh, from the Patriot News that Jeff Lebo was down to see. Uh, yeah, Jeff Lebo, a guy that I looked up to uh, in eighth grade, studied his game a lot. So definitely somebody I'm very fond of. And he'll be Mike Zangari's coach next year at East Carolina. Jeff was down to see Mike play the other night. What a great decision for Mike Zangari to go there, especially with Jeff Lebo being a player development guy. He's going to get better each year uh, at East Carolina. No LaRue for three. First three points of the game for Cedar Cliff. Cedar Cliff did not come, did, they did not start out trying to speed this game up uh, defensively. They are playing man to man, but in a half court set. And it goes back the other way. Colts will trigger it in. Uh, backward pressure. We got a 2-2-1 press here for Redland. 
Both coaches trying their hand at some different things early here. Off the fingertips of Stump. We were on hand for his signing. He was he's headed to Gardner-Webb University. Yeah, Logan Stump's improved a lot now. He worked very hard, a lot of credit to the young man, put a lot of time in his game on every aspect of the game. Then Gary wanting the ball on the post. Antonelli, a sophomore, penetrating. He's got the rebound. Colts, the joke. Baseline. This is where the Colts can hurt you. Um, this is tough. It's hard guarding 6 5, slithering to the basket. Foul shot's going to be a foul line's going to be a key here. Tied at four. There is Scott Slayton, the coach for Redland. Joke gets his second point. Cedarcliff picking up a little bit more of a three-quarter half-court pickup. Antonelli, sophomore, one of the better young prospects in the, in the area, Dominic Antonelli at, at point guard. Without, okay, here's his brother. Van Gary skies for the rebound, but Stump came away with it. Here's Antonelli gets the rebound. Cedarcliff being pretty quick to pull the trigger early. Dominic. Duke got the rebound. Antonelli misses. Aru gets the rebound. Worry about Scott Slayton. If you're wondering at home, we got a lot of shots coming up here. He employs. Uh, his players with confidence. These guards have a green light. Colton Lewis gets his first two of the game, and it's a 7-4 Colts lead. Cedarcliff starting to settle in. Now we've run off seven straight of their own. And traveling. Redland 0 of 3 on the 3 so far from the outside. Anthony Bryant in third leading scorer uh, off the 4.5 a game, fourth leading scorer for Redland uh, in with a little patch over his eye. This kid gets after it apparently. 3 2 zone for Redland. Stump. Nice follow by Lewis. That. A big bucket for Cedar Cliff and a nice follow by Colton Lewis. His fourth point already. Charlie and Greg, one of the things right away that, that Redland knows probably you have to do is five guys have to learn about out. The size difference is making a difference for Cedar Cliff. Yeah. Lewis has five. Redland's going to have to find a way of getting that ball to Zingari and putting the pressure on the Cedar Cliff defense. Zingari wants the basketball tonight, and, and I would give it to him. I would give it to him on a regular basis. Try to run that offense through him. There Go he down is. six, and there he is. And that's a foul inside on the joke. If you look at Zingari's arms and shoulders, he's definitely put some time in the weight room here. Definitely. You know, in looking at him in previous broadcasts, he's been putting some time in the weight room. We need to, uh, Redland needs to use these uh, big shoulders tonight and, and, and try to try to get something around the basket. Coach, you saw is Jimmy Rao. His team nine and ten and one overall. Yeah. And Walter Martinez back in for the Colts. Antonelli, Duke Antonelli to Trigger. It's the jokes too, and Coach Rao doesn't want to go into that second quarter with uh, with him getting his third. Antonelli. That's a three, and that's his first three of the game. Too much room there. The scouting report has two guys that can shoot and, and, and a big guy. And 
Should be no room on those shots, and they're giving it to him, and Antonelli takes advantage of it. Cedar Cliff lead is three in their basketball. Aru tries to answer. Patriots clear the boards. Antonelli again. Big, big rebound by Hubbard. Duke Antonelli missed. Aru comes away with the basketball. Cedar Cook not doing anything to get the ball in the middle to try to crack this zone up. A lot of line on the perimeter. There it is. Need to, see, need to get some attack penetration here. It's not, Charlie, just, one of the things Redland's gone to is now 3-2. And the sneak spot is where Cedar Cook's looking to try to attack right now. Big block by the Colts. And Gary. He's got five. Lead is down to one again. Back to the Patriots. Nobody rebounding for Cedar Cliff right now. Coach Rao's not happy. It's a shot, and that's it. Bryant takes it back to Antonelli. A minute left. Turned it over. A couple substitutions. Sean Ford back into the game. Zach Gaelic into the game for the Red Colts. Redlands back in this now 10-9. 58 seconds to go, this is where they want it. Cedar Cliff really not doing anything to shake things up, not doing anything to get those easy baskets in transition, just kind of happy with the status. Stump for three. Well, and that's why Logan Stump's a division one shooter. That's a good old college jump shot right there. Ford, Lewis clears the boards. Contact there between uh, Hubbard. Looks like Gaelic. And Scott Slate is not happy with the call. Now we're going to discuss it. And watch, watch what happens here again. The Cedar Cliff player was pulling him back with his elbow. Looked just like they were tangled. Yeah, that was a tough one. Yeah, tangled up. Cedar Cliff's going to get the last shot here. Hopkins. Hopkins, and a one. Living up to the billing so far, Cedar Cliff with a four point advantage, 13-9 after one. You're watching High School Sports Live on ABC 27. Select Physical Therapy College Spotlight. Former Lady Patriot go-to team leader Kaylee Borman is off to a highly impressive start in her freshman year playing at Eastern University. During a January 5th matchup against Cedar Crest College, Kaylee helped lead her Eastern Eagles to a crucial victory, scoring 23 points. Advanced Hoops would like to wish its alum Kaylee the very best as her college career continues to unfold. Kaylee Borman is tonight's Select Physical Therapy College Spotlight. Borman and Bab Certified Public Accountants is a full-service accounting tax and consulting firm with over 17 years experience serving the central Pennsylvania region. From taxes to payroll, from corporate accounting to business consulting, let Borman and Bab help you achieve your financial success. Dr. Scott King from Arlington Orthopedics is one of the few area experts on hip injuries. His professional hockey career with the Detroit Red Wings is featured in this exclusive interview. 
Watch as Dr. King explains his own experience with a hip injury and how it helps him identify with his patients. Dr. King goes on to analyze the varying hip injuries that have plagued popular athletes like Bo Jackson, Chase Utley, and Alex Rodriguez. For the full interview, type in PASportsLiveTV.com. Knoll Insurance, located at 704 Bridge Street in New Cumberland. They offer property, casualty, auto, homeowners, health, and life insurance. Knoll Insurance also offers notary services. Call Knoll Insurance today at 774-8128. Greg Mace, Charlie Fortney, Todd McCall back live from Redland High School. 13-9, the Colts on top. And Gary wanting the basketball tonight. Loose, went off of Lewis. No, last touch by Zan Gary. Well, really good start here for Colton Lewis. He's got five points and four rebounds in the first quarter. Yeah, he does. And, and, and they're going to need a, a good effort from Colton Lewis to offset Mike and Gary's. Uh, performance, that's for sure. Mike and Gary right there put the ball on the floor. Big guys, you need to, at home, you need to keep that ball above your head because the game plan is to collapse down on you, especially when you're a good ball player. 3-2. 3-2 is one of the hardest zones to play against. And find shots if it's, if it's executed effectively. Redland's doing a good job right now. You mentioned the 3-2. I mean, right now, as long as you're hitting outside shots, you can be effective. But as you know, the 3-2, you've got to put three guys inside the box moving around, and that limits the two-guard front. But you know what? Cedar Cliff's answering from the three-point line. And that's Martinez. A big one for Martinez. That's a great spark off the bench. Lead is seven for the Colts early second quarter. And Cedar Cliff's playing a man, but it's almost like a zone on Zingari. There's a lot of hedging toward him. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, Logan Stump going over and almost doubling, making that pass discouraging right now. It's a tough situation for Redland right now because of the, the hedging. It's almost like Mike DeGarry's being double teamed before he even gets the ball. He's forced to have to catch it 20 feet from the basket. Ah, and reach in there for Walter Martinez. Reaching in on Duke Antonelli. Redland still looking for their first point of the quarter. Coach Rao talking to Martinez, done a great job. This is Martinez, this is the Matt Alvarez of this year, that combo type player. Comes off the bench, provides a little bit of a spark for Cedar Cliff and a big spark with that last three pointer. Antonelli almost got the glass and well, got the roll. Usually at home you get those. <laughs> in, the, in the driveway you do. Martinez for three. Well, and, and, and the reason why they're not on Martinez is because this isn't typical of where his production comes. Uh, Coach Rao's happy. And this, part of a 6-0 run to start this quarter in the opening 51 seconds. Well, Coach Slayton's not happy that any player's left open, but you're taking your chances. You're trying to guard a Division I shooter in Logan Stump. You're trying to guard uh, the size of, uh, of Carlton Lewis, no uh, Christo Majoke, and, and you take your chances. All right, a reminder that you can uh, like us on Facebook, High School Sports Live. We've got photos, video highlights, updates, and more. If you were one of the one zillion people in the world on Facebook, please like us. And again, a reminder on uh, PASportsLiveTV.com, photos, video clips, game match schedules, and much more. The website to go to, PASportsLiveTV.com. Patriots trying to slow down this run by the Colts here in the second quarter. John Ford tries to do it. Zangari got the tip, doesn't go. Here comes Stump out of the pack. Good decision by Stump. Stump to pull it back out and reset. They do not have to force it at this point. Up by 10 here in the second quarter. Boy, Lewis is hot. He's got eight. Leads everybody. And when a, when, a, when, a, when a post player like that can step out and hit the three, that's like, that hurts. Lewis has really improved his game this offseason. He's been in the weight room, spent a lot of time working on his game. Well, Redland has yet to hit a three in the second quarter, and Cedar Cliff is hot on the 9-0 run. 
Charlie, you've talked about getting Zangari involved. One of the things, if, from a guard point of view, if I'm going to make turnovers, it's pump faking and trying to get the big guy the ball. And I think getting him more active is getting him back in a game right now that's hurting him. Hopkins almost lost a nice ball by Antonelli for... Oh, that's that's, well, that's a good call by the official because Dominic Antonelli trying to... Sophomore uh, yeah, uh, trying to make a, something happen, and he does. And, and, and it looked like a tie-up, but really when, uh, you know, when Will Hopkins jumped on top of Antonelli to, for the tie-up, referee made a good call to call that a foul. They were also rewarded Antonelli's hustle. Brad Yinks making the call there. There's uh, four guards in a post in for uh, Redland. Definitely outsized in this matchup. Antonelli's looking to be aggressive. Right into Zingari. Kicking it back out to Ford. That's the back court. Uh, uh, they're going to get a concern on that. And Scott Slayton says, hey, look at this. Well, let's see the instant replay. Instant replay on this one. Coach Slayton saying that the uh, Cedar Cliff guy tipped it. And I think he's right here, guys. Well, we missed that part, but I think he is right. Yeah. But. Turnover in the quarter. Cedar Cliff went for the alley oop for Stomp. This is a play these guys have, uh, have, have designed in the summer camp, team camp. Uh, almost got it to go, but it, the aggressiveness of the play got Colton Lewis a rebound, put back foul. Uh, Cedar Cliff's ball. Stomp missed. Come the Patriots, Anthony Bryant. It's an important time to answer for Redland. Did not. A joke got the ball. Came out of the misstep. I got a whistle near the rebound. Looks like Tanner Hubbard committed the foul. Foul on Mike and Gary under the basket. They say pushing off against Zach Gallick. Greg and Charlie, I, I want to know if you've noticed just the difference in the tempo now. Cedar Cliff looking for every opportunity to push the ball, and it's making a difference. There's not the joke. And fortunately for Redland, uh, Logan Stumps missed on a number of shots that he usually hits. Redland still looking for their first points of the quarter. Boy, nothing's falling. And these are shots that usually fall for uh, Duke Antonella. Cedar Cliff uh, is, is fortunate that these shots haven't fallen four, because there's been a lot of wide open takes here, Greg. Unguarded uh, three-point shooters for, for Redland. Steal by Bryant. Joe got a hand on him. We'll stay with Redland. Twenty-two to nine. And Gary, his seventh point. You know, Greg, I played against Jeff Lebo. Uh, I mean, uh, Billy Owens. The entire offense went through the big guy. Everybody got a three for Zach Gallup, the, the promising sophomore for Cedar Club. Everything went through Billy Owens. The shooters got shots through Billy Owens. And, and, and at this point, Mike's and Gary, every time he touches the ball, something good's happening. Antonelli couldn't get it to go down. Colts controlling and controlling on the scoreboard. 13-point lead with two and a half left in the half, and a fast-moving half at that. 
Nice entry pass. Put it up on the glass. Well, they wanted a goal, ten, but I'll tell you what, that was just a great athletic play there. Great. Uh, Zengary got the block. I'll tell you what, Zengary's trying to keep his team in it from both sides of the ball, defensively and offensively. Over the back on Zalek, Zach Gallant. Wearing Michael Jordan's number, he must he must want to skywalk that kid. <laughs> he can jump too. Fast paced first half. 13 9 after one. Cedar Cliff, they have opened the lead to 13. Then Gary uh, had a look and decided otherwise. He's got the mismatch inside, and he's mad he did not receive the ball. Gary wants the basketball. There's Antonelli. His third point of the game and a big trip there for Redland. Got to get a stop and get another basket down here. Redland and a man-to-man. -man. And that is a travel against Logan Stump. A well, reminder to stay tuned for our halftime shootout, and this is going to be one of our uh, best ever, I think. Redland, Red Sea kids are going to take a crack at the halftime shootout, and our United Concordia Dental halftime report is coming up as well. 24-13, a minute and a half left here in the second quarter. Vince Toops is the place for kids like me. <laughs> Charlie Fortney teaches shooting, dribbling, passing, defense, and all kinds of fun games. The coaches are really cool. My favorite coach is Lenny, because he gives out candy if we do good. By the way, this is my dad, Charlie Fortney. Ooh. 30 seconds left here in the first half. Greg, the difference in the half, uh, 19 to 12 on the rebounds favored Cedarcliff, and then Redlands only two for 13 from three-point range. They could help their case by making a few more of those. Thanks to Jeff Morrow here sitting next to me, we were able to get some, some stats here. And Jeff will be with us. Coach Rao did not see the hold on Zingari, but Zingari being aggressive. And that's that's what happens. When you get the ball to your big, your division one big, you're gonna good things are gonna happen. He's drawing a lot of attention around the basket. Zingari's got eight. And he'll try to cut the lead to nine. Nine points, the lead is nine. Coming up on a minute left in the quarter. And a reach in, and Anthony Bryant got a hand in. Colton Lewis right in front of us. Uh, a little pushing up. We got a little three second. Look that way. Three second violation down the other end. So uh, turnover for Cedar Cliff, and now the Patriots. Big trip down court, under a minute left. First half. John Ford. Here Gary wants the ball, he has his hands up. Going for the basketball. Tom Antonelli saw the double coming. 
was a fun matchup. Isn't it? Red Man wants the last shot here. I think Slayton wants to talk about it and not have to not run the ball. There's a steal. Uh, that's not what he wanted to do. Now Cedarcliff will get a last crack at it. And the crack goes to Martinez. Zangari. That's a charge. That is. That might, over anxious. That's number two on Zangari. He's trying to make a play. He wants his team to win. He can't fault him, but he wants to make a play. We're gonna have to play this last four seconds without Zangari. But hey, halftime, we got the Red Sea against the Golden Corral. Don't go nowhere, it's gonna be exciting. Probably gonna be more exciting the halftime shootout than the actual game at this point, Greg. <laughs> the students wanna go at each other. Well, here we go. We're gonna, four seconds left on the uh, clock here at the half, and then Charlie and I will take center court with these students for our Arlington Orthopedic halftime shootout. And Charlie, I got the tiebreaker. Greg, I got the tiebreaker. Both teams tie. I want the shot. <laughs> well, it looks like Cedar Cliffs. As the Redlands going to go to the back, yeah, back court, court yeah. violation. Yep. And, and it, his foot did go over the line. So they've got a chance to. Uh, now Redland has a chance yep. to end. They're going to go right inside to the post up. To chance Zingari. to cut it to six. That three point post up. That shot was blocked at the end. Uh, they got, he called they a foul. foul. Yeah. That'll be three foul shots for Zagari. Colton Lewis just picked up number. Uh, I think that's number two on Lewis. Him and Zangari both have two. So Zangari will go to the line. Chance to make it a two possession game here if he can knock down all three. I, uh, his 10th. It's like shooting technicals here. Cedarcliff doesn't, not gonna feel comfortable going into the second half. Was in Gary having the op or the uh, Redland having an opportunity to still be in this game because they're at Redland. Chance to cut it to seven to end the half, and he does. Eleven for Zangari, 24-17. The Colts have cut into the lead here at the end of the half. We'll be back with our Arlington Orthopedic halftime shootout when we come back. 24-17, Colts on top. Groff Tractor and Equipment is PA's full-line equipment dealer, representing Case Construction along with other leading manufacturers. Groff Tractor has built a 53-year reputation in serving the total sales, rentals, parts, and service needs of its customers. Groff Tractor paves the way for your project from start to finish offering the latest parts and equipment from Case Construction and more. Groff also offers 24-7 job site support. Groff Tractor and Equipment is your number one source for everything under construction. All-state freshman Malia Tate DeFridis tore her ACL in a heated state playoff and her dreams seemed shattered. I tried to come back in and it wasn't working out. I thought that my basketball career was over. Getting an assist from the doctors at Arlington Orthopedic Aliyah is ready to attack the hoop this season. It feels good when I jump and cut and stuff. It feels normal, and the brace really helps me. To go from tears to a smile, it was, it was, it was just a beautiful thing. You don't think about physical therapy until you need it. When an injury occurs, think Select Physical Therapy. Select leads the way in providing patients with clinical expertise using the latest medical research and techniques. Our team provides physical and hand therapy, pre and post surgery, work injury rehabilitation, and much more. With several locations in the Harrisburg area, let Select return you to activity at home, work, or play. Select Physical Therapy. Recovery starts here. Charlie Fortney will uh, tell 
us who each contestant is and who they're shooting for. Here we go. Okay, shooting on behalf of the Red Sea, uh, representing Arlington Orthopedic is Kyle K. <laughs> Brett Chester representing Cleveland Brothers. Jake Green representing Sun Motors. Brett Niederreiter representing Borman and Babs. And Ricky Kronick representing Groff Tractor. And Steve Hartman representing Pizza Hut. All right, now for the Golden Corral. Wilton Smith will shoot on behalf of Select Physical Therapy. Penn National will be represented by Thomas Kutz. Laura Morrow will represent the Dolphin County Commissioners. Jake Robinson, United Concordia. Marlena Woods will represent Knoll Insurance. And Pamela Brindley will shoot on behalf of HN Fischl and Associates. All right, so we're going to go start at this end. Actually, actually, Greg, this will happen at the same time. There will be 60 seconds. And we have a timer? Oh, yes, we will start at the seven minute mark and we will find out which team can make the most baskets in 60 seconds. Ready and go! We're counting one to my left. Two to one, Golden Corral. It is still two to one. We are at a standstill at two to one. Oh, it is three to two, Golden Corral. Three, three. Four to three. Four, four. Four to four, and we have 15 seconds. Five to four. Go Six to four, and that is it. All right. Woo. Golden Corral's a winner. Nice work, guys. All right, we might need to borrow some of these guys for the game tonight. All right, let's give a hand for the Golden Corral and the Red Sea. Our Arlington Orthopedic Halftime Shootout, Charlie Todd and I will be back with more coming up after this. You're watching High School Sports Live on ABC 27. United Concordia Dental has been insuring Central Pennsylvania for over 40 years. Whether you're looking for group, family, or individual coverage, United Concordia has the right plan to fit your specific needs. United Concordia also prides itself on its commitment to the community. Through its efforts to arrange free dental services for the underserved and its charitable contributions throughout the area, United Concordia not only takes care of your smile, we give you something to smile about. There's something to be said for a company that has survived the Great Depression weathered a handful of recessions and emerged from today's challenging marketplace stronger than ever. And it's worth noting that success has come while keeping its headquarters and decision-making local for more than 80 years. Perhaps growing deeper roots to ensure strength and stability is an idea whose time has come. We figured that out eight decades ago. Penn National Insurance. Got old electronics such as a TV or computer to recycle? We've got your answer at the Dolphin County Recycling Center. E-cycling is quick, easy, and free for all county residents. You can also recycle old major appliances and other items safely at our center. Have questions? Call our helpful staff at the Recycling Center or check our website for more information. Recycling is now more convenient than ever. Join us in going green to protect our environment. Keep our earth clean and green. Wipe out waste and recycle. The neurologist said you will lose the ability to swallow, to breathe. You will die. I asked the neurologist, why? If we could transplant hearts, couldn't we also replace damaged motor neurons? Jennifer devoted the last six years of her life to wiping out ALS. Project ALS has created a new paradigm for disease research. We know the goal. We want to get a cure for ALS. Greg Mace, Charlie Fortney, Todd McCall back with you live here on ABC 27, our United Concordia Dental Halftime Report. Well, 24-17, Charlie, 
Cedar Club had a chance to really start to pull away, but give Redland a lot of credit for hanging toughs, and Gary hit a couple of free throws when he drew that foul at the end of the half. Yeah, Mike's and Gary kept calling for the ball, and that was the difference in the, in, in the latter part of the second half. And one of Cedar Cliff's best friends in the first half was the Redland Patriots not able to knock down enough of those outside shots. Cedar Cliff give them credit. They're getting the rebounds, out-rebounded uh, Redland in the first half. But I think uh, if Redland can get hot, they, could, they can jump back in this game. But Cedar Cliff's going to have to try to push this pressure a little bit to secure this win for them. And Cedar Cliff got off to a great start in that quarter. They, they went on a 9-0 run. They were hitting threes. They looked very solid. And then Redland just kind of hung around, hung around. Yeah, and that's what happens. Uh, Redland uh, does not score as many points per game, so they're happy with a 50-point game. Uh, Cedar Cliff's definitely going to have to turn it up a notch and get in their comfort zone and get out in transition. Uh, they're not getting a lot uh, of their typical uh, free baskets. They're actually making some threes that they don't normally make at certain positions. Second half's going to be interesting for oh, sure. All right, you're going to see it coming up. 24 to 17, Cedar Cliff with a halftime advantage. Charlie Todd and I will be back as we continue from Redland High School, High School Sports Live here on ABC 27. United Concordia Dental has been insuring Central Pennsylvania for over 40 years. Whether you're looking for group, family, or individual coverage, United Concordia has the right plan to fit your specific needs. United Concordia also prides itself on its commitment to the community. Through its efforts to arrange free dental services for the underserved and its charitable contributions throughout the area, United Concordia not only takes care of your smile, we give you something to smile about. There's something to be said for a company that has survived the Great Depression, weathered a handful of recessions, and emerged from today's challenging marketplace stronger than ever. And it's worth noting that success has come while keeping its headquarters and decision-making local for more than 80 years. Perhaps growing deeper roots to ensure strength and stability is an idea whose time has come. We figured that out eight decades ago. Penn National Insurance. Got old electronics, such as a TV or computer, to recycle? We've got your answer at the Dolphin County Recycling Center. E-cycling is quick, easy, and free for all county residents. You can also recycle old major appliances and other items safely at our center. Have questions? Call our helpful staff at the Recycling Center or check our website for more information. Recycling is now more convenient than ever. Join us in going green to protect our environment. Keep our earth clean and green. Wipe out waste and recycle. The neurologist said you will lose the ability to swallow, to breathe. You will die. I asked the neurologist, why? If we could transplant hearts, couldn't we also replace damaged motor neurons? Jennifer devoted the last six years of her life to wiping out ALS. Project ALS has created a new paradigm for disease research. We know the goal. We want to get a cure for ALS. Well, a big crowd here at Cedar Cliff tonight at a Redland here for the Cedar Cliff Redland matchup. 24-17. The uh, Colts with the advantage. It's you know, the style of play has this game the, the you know, the crowd's not as into this Greg uh, game Greg as I thought they would be. Has a lot to do with the style of play being very methodical. There's not a lot of shaking up going out there. Very low scoring first half. And not, I mean, we've had some solid play. Nothing spectacular. Nobody's dunked. Uh, you're right. And it's also warm in here. I don't know how much of that gets, sometimes you get drained by that as well. That was Aru going up. And there's a nice follow by Lewis. And Redland comes out in a man-to-man. -man. That favors the way Cedar Cliff wants to play. And that spoke to the... Uh, the, the, the Cedar Cliff style. So look look for Redland to possibly get out of this man if that keeps happening. Redland in the home white with a basketball. Antonelli, uh, last touch there by Logan Stump, so it will go back to Redland. Well, credit Antonelli for trying to make something happen, but there's some long arms there. Blocking those shots. Antonelli with a big three. 
Coach Rao not happy that Antonelli got that opportunity. There's not a lot on the scouting report against Redland to catch up with, and uh, that's a big mistake. 26-20, Cedar Cliff. Hopkins for three. Hopkins stepped back nicely to make sure he had a three-pointer. He just answered that Antonelli uh, three-point shot right there. His first basket of the game. Todd, your thoughts on the first, uh, the beginning of this first uh, third quarter? I really think the Redland Patriots are coming out with a little more, a little more physicalness. But you know, like you said, the Cedar Cliff and. And one of those big surprises, Colton Lewis' first half, I thought, made a big difference. Yeah, he's been playing well lately for Cedar Cliff. Lewis has 10 of the Cedar Cliff 29. Patriots ball down nine. Ford couldn't get the roll. Well, that would have been huge for Redman. Nice reverse. Logan stump. That was a nice pass by Christo Majoke to find Stump streaking to the basket. San Gary a little off balance. Nice rebound, Ford. He got three cracks at it, and maybe a fourth for Antonelli, but he had his shot blocked by a roof. There's some good no calls there because there's definitely some uh, good blocks around the basket. Uh, nice rebound. For, for Redland there, number 30. Look at that, whoa, right off the back of Hopkins. Wow, and Antonelli. Tanner Hubbard. Put it right off his back. I haven't seen that in a while. I saw that, Carlisle did that years ago. Butchie Evans years ago did that in a playoff game. When I was a kid, I saw that happen. That was the last time I've seen it happen. A little bit of a chess game going on here. I'll tell you what, Redland's Got to be happy with a game that stays within reach at home. Um. Stump. Big offensive rebound by Aru. Yeah. Tried to go down low to a cutting Aru. And well, that cut should be more around the high post area, not, not in traffic with a 6'9 defender like Mike Zingari able to deflect the ball. Antonelli. Good block by Colton Lewis. He's good on the board tonight as well. As we talk about players of the game, he's shaping up to be one of those possibilities, Colton Lewis. A joke, a high arc. Big rebound by Tanner Hubbard, number 30. 6'3", senior. Antonelli. Off the side of the rim. I'll tell you what, between Stump not able to hit, Antonelli not able to hit, the three-point shooters that normally make shots are not making them for either team tonight. That was a good ball movement. They went inside to the joke. A lot of open looks tonight, too. Usually in these zones, they're usually designed to just close out on the shooters, but there's a lot of miscues on defense both ways that I don't, you don't usually see with these uh, coaches in their zone defense. Third point of the game from a joke. He's a 6'4 senior. Lead is 10. And he's got four. This is an important possession for Redland because this is a stop here, a basket here keeps this game in, in, under double digits. If not, Cedarcliff has a chance to, to, to go up by 13, 14 points. Not a good place to be at. Antonelli got the roll. Great attack for Antonelli. That was an important basket. Lead is nine. Important for Redland. Lally oop. Stump couldn't get the tip, goes out of bounds. 3.41 left, third quarter. Cedar Cliff with a 34-24 lead and you're watching High School Sports Live on ABC 27.
here's a deal, an amazing pizza steal. Get any pizza, pizza for ten dollars, it's for real. So go ahead and ask yourself, what have I got to lose for just ten dollars? Now you get to choose any pizza, any toppings, any crust. There's no stopping any size. You decide for ten dollars, you can buy any pizza, any toppings, any crust. There's no stopping any size. You decide for ten dollars, you can buy. Any High School Sports Live is brought to you by Hemp Brothers, paving the way in concrete, asphalt, crushed stone construction services. Keystone State Games, Pennsylvania's largest amateur athletic festival. NK Sporting Goods, partnered with NK Graphics, has been outfitting the teams of Central PA for over 25 years. United Concordia, ensuring America's dental health for over 40 years. Regen, muscle recovery beverage. Experience the raw power of natural cocoa. Groff, tractor and equipment, we're your number one source for everything under construction. Sun Motor Cars, experience Central PA's ultimate driving headquarters. Central Pennsylvania Basketball Officials Association. Become an expert at knowing one rule, one interpretation. The Turnbridge Group, part of RBC Wealth Management, helping our clients and communities create better tomorrows. We invite you to join us on Facebook, like High School Sports Live, game broadcast video clips, and more High School Sports Live on Facebook. And you can also vote for our Sun Motor Cars player of the game, and we've got a few to choose from here. PASportsLiveTV.com will announce that at the end of this contest. Rebound on the floor goes to the Patriots. Then Gary kicking it back out. Antonelli tried to uh, find an outlet. I I'm just, I'm amazed at the amount of open shots the Redland shooters are getting. Um, there's three guys in this lineup for Redland that are in the scoring column on a regular basis. Um, and there's two strong role players. And, and it, I know Coach Rao's not happy that they're not keeping up with these guys. And fortunately that for, for Redland, Logan Stump's not hitting the mark right now. These are shots that he usually knocks down. Then Gary. Shot is short. Another rebound for Lewis. Stump wisely kicked it back out to Majoke. And they'll go back and they'll stay with Cedar Cliff. Got his own rebound there. Almost like a self pass. Might have grazed the rim, might have got away with that. Jeff Morrow from the uh, Patriot News and PennLive.com is, is with us, and we're going to talk about some things that happened tonight at the West Shore School Board uh, in relation to both these programs. Let's Cedar Clip take the possession here. Nice running play by Majoke for two. Jeff, uh, there's been a lot of talk, obviously, about wh what the financial needs and what these two schools may have to do down the line. There were some recommendations made tonight. Tell us about what you've heard. Among the recommendations, uh, the, the ones that we in the sports, sports area are mostly concerned with is the potential merger of the two sports programs. Uh, that was voted on tonight as a recommendation, and it was voted down 5-4. to four. Now, that does not mean it's not going to happen. It means that it was voted that they did not recommend it tonight. The real vote comes next week. There were other votes tonight uh, to, to save money, to, to reach the budget. Uh, like, for example, cutting Latin and cutting foreign language classes from the middle schools. Uh, but the key for sports fans is they voted against recommending combining the sports programs by a five to four vote. Well, you know what, and, and Jeff, I don't know if you remember this, Greg, I, well, you and I have talked about this. CDs 12 years ago or so tried to do this, and it really got voted down in the end. This is not gonna happen without a fight, and, and the fact that it's already five four the other way, I don't, I don't see it happening. It takes away a lot of opportunity from kids. The, the problem uh, is, Charlie, what, the way they went tonight, they're still about, a half a million dollars short of reaching their budget. And what cost about a half a million is they would save about a half a million dollars if they did right. combine the program. So it's still very much alive. It just was voted against as a recommendation. Well, and I agree with you there and the financial. I think, though, the conversation that I'm hearing in public is, hey, that's 
60 less kids able to play football. That's, that's uh, counting all the programs, that's about another 75 from junior high to varsity kids that can't play basketball. And, and, and these, you know, there's a lot of statistics out there that kids in extracurricular activities do better in school and, and they, they keep those grades up. And definitely on the college level, it's proven that the college athletes graduate at a higher rate than the regular students from, from, from a four-year situation. So I think those arguments will work in the end if those folks that believe that can fight it hard enough. What they're fighting against, though, Charlie, are, and this is, might, might not be popular in the sports community, but you're looking at cutting arts, you're looking at cutting teacher positions, you're looking at, at yep. cutting uh, librarians and, and various other departments, and that's not right. what anybody wants to do. Sports is, is so far down when it comes to uh, the education. It, it, it should not... Sports should not matter when it comes to, if you, if, if you can save teachers by Correct. combining sports, then that's what matters to me. Yeah, and, and that, that, that's a good point. And meanwhile, we uh, Noel Rue there, or Christo, Majoke made a basket for Cedar Cliff to put him up 12. Yep, he's got nine, uh, nine points. Jeff, is this, the, is this the way you think the, thought this game would flow? Yeah, we're pretty much right on. Uh, Redlands missed, as Charlie's pointed out, a lot of open shots, uh, and that's, that's really hurting them. Uh, Logan Stumpf missed a lot of open shots, yes. Charlie says. But, uh, you know, even if those, if Redland was making their shots and Logan was making their shots, we'd still be looking at around the same situation. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of about even at this point. Um, and, and the percentage is going to go down when you're able to key on guys that, that are shooters and you don't have as much to take the pressure off them. Well, there's, there's Lewis again with another rebound. Yeah, Jeff, as we're talking about player of the game, Colin Lewis is kind of doing it in a lot of different ways tonight. He's got some points, he's got some rebounds, he's got some blocks. We'll get some official stats in a little bit, but he's probably the leader for player of the game right now. My, my thoughts on Cedar Cliff's side, Greg, what do you guys think? He's got 10 rebounds and 10 points. He's got a double-double already, and I only have Zangari for one rebound. I mean, at least on, the, on the, that aspect, he's outplaying Zangari. Redland's having a hard time consistently getting the ball to Mike Zingari as right. well. And, and it's hard when you got the, you got uh, Colton Lewis guarding with a hedging from Logan Stump and a, and a guard dropping down on every pass. It's, you know, it's, it's a tough situation for Redland there. They're keying on him pretty hard. Final seconds, third quarter. Tip, tip, goes. Majok's 11th point and a 14-point Cedar Cliff lead. Final quarter coming up, Cedar Cliff 40. Redland 26. You're watching High School Sports Live on ABC 27. You don't think about physical therapy until you need it. When an injury occurs, think Select Physical Therapy. Select leads the way in providing patients with clinical expertise using the latest medical research and techniques. Our team provides physical and hand therapy, pre and post surgery, work injury rehabilitation, and much more. With several locations in the Harrisburg area, let Select return you to activity at home, work, or play. Select Physical Therapy. Recovery starts here. Vince Toops is the place for kids like me. <laughs> Charlie Fortney teaches shooting, dribbling, passing, defense, and all kinds of fun games. The coaches are really cool. My favorite coach is Lenny, because he gives out candy if we do good. By the way, this is my dad, Charlie Fortney. Greg Nace with Charlie Fortney, Todd McCall, Jeff Morrow from the Patriot News and KenLive.com, who Charlie, I should point out that he and I spend many summer nights uh, in the same ballpark. Jeff, of course, is also the beat writer for the uh, Patriot News for the Harrisburg Senators this season just around the corner. Right now, just around the corner, the fourth quarter, 40 to 26 after a 24-17 halftime lead for the Colts. Cedar Clip out rebounding Redland 21 to 15. Scott Slayton fighting hard for his team right now. He got a technical foul. He was not happy. He's trying to fire his guys up in some way. Sometimes coaches will do this. Uh, you know, Scott Slayton was not happy. He thought that last, uh, there was a goaltending on the last, that the last shot was effect, 
Um, he just wanted to let the referees know how he felt. But Greg, I want to talk about Scott Slate and Jeff for a little bit. This is a guy here that has won this rivalry um, countless times. I don't know the exact stats on it, but he has done a great job preparing kids for college. You got Jermaine Marshall, you got Steve Zack getting good playing time at LaSalle. Now you got Mike and Gary going off. Robbie Agnon, who played in the NFL a little bit, played for him years ago. He's, he's just done a good, Nick Diller, he's really done a good job preparing kids uh, and getting kids ready to play. He naturally doesn't have as many tools in his belt this year. Uh, but he's trying to fight for these guys today to get out there and, and try to end this game on a good note. Yeah. I was here last year when, when they had senior night. We, it wasn't a game we televised. We were, we, I was just here to listen. We were shooting the game. And I was over, I had never heard a coach say so many profound and wonderful things about his players as he did about his seniors last year. It was an inspiring message that he gave and a wonderful ceremony. I love listening to him. Well, and, and he, he did it. In, in the pregame with Mike and Gary. And I think that's why players like playing for him because there you go. Speaking of players playing for him, here's Mike and Gary taking it strong. He's got 13 points. But if your coach is going to be talking highly of you publicly, you're going to want to play for him. What do you think, Jeff? He, uh, he loved that team last year, and he loves all of his kids, but Greg is right. I mean, the way, the affection he had for that group last year that, you know, reached states and had a nice run before that. It was, you know, it's off the charts. And, and I think, Charlie, you're right. Everybody's going to love playing for a guy who's going to support you like that. Hopkins has five, and the lead is 43-18. 15-point advantage for the Colts, and Gary couldn't get it to fall. Trying to make something happen there. Mike's having fun out there. He's laughing. He's smiling. He's a senior. He's got his Division I scholarship signed, sealed, and delivered. Yeah, Hats off to him. He's smiling, but he ain't happy. He's not happy. <laughs> Remember, this is a team that up until last year had won 20-some straight games against Cedar Cliff. You know, Redland had owned this robbery. Uh, Cedar Cliff finally beat them last year. But last game that they played last year, Redland beat them on yeah. the last second Nick Diller shot. Right, so. Exactly. This will be probably the first time, based on your stats there, that Cedar Cliff's won at Redland in, in probably uh, eight to ten years, yeah. based on those stats. Cedar Cliff happy with some 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 stalling of the basketball here. I think Jim Rao doesn't want to allow Redland to get anything going. That's a tricky pass. Colton Lewis. Wow. Colton Lewis sealing the deal on the Sun Motors player of the game here. I'll tell you, what a nice shot for a big guy. That's indicative of the way things are going right now for Cedar Cliff and against Redland. Yeah. And a whistle. John Ford was running around that corner like he had the football in his hand and got fouled by Hopkins. If Redland has any prayer in this game, they need both Antonelli brothers and John Ford to all get hot from deep and, and really open things up, and that would open up for Zane Gary, but they need to do it, and they need to do it soon. Yeah, Dom Antonelli's been quiet early here, or quiet late. Early in the game, he was making things happen with Ford. See, that's the shot that needs to fall. And it's not. Hasn't all night. Doesn't it seem like Redland, well, they got the shoes, but they lack, they lack the penetration to make life easier on the offense. A guy that can maybe just hand deliver a couple layups, a uh, couple open threes. It just seems like they're constantly shooting into pressure. Yeah, I, I agree. Well, they've missed going on uh, 13 straight three-pointers going back to the first quarter. At least 13 straight, according to my numbers. 5-11 left here in the fourth quarter. Here's Lewis, got the step on Zan. Gary in a nice move. 14 for Lewis. You can tell this game mattered a lot to Lewis. His chance to go against Zan Gary, his chance to really prove himself. You know, he's like a third, fourth tier guy on Cedar Cliff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just his presence at 6'7 has added to the Cedar Cliff. Without him this year, it kind of puts Christo Majoke Garden, the big guy, or Logan Stump. It allows these guys, these big wings for Cedar Cliff to fall in more of their natural positions. Right. Um, and also, I think, gives Cedar Cliff a chance at a deeper run this year in, 
in the playoffs. And State, State. Where you're talking, Charlie, about the uh, struggles Redland has had getting the ball inside to Zangari. Well, Lewis playing inside and being able to push Majoke outside and getting his long yeah, arms yeah. and whatnot and his quickness, uh, that's a big part of that. 14 points for Lewis, 11 rebounds. Jeff Marr from the Patriot News joining Charlie Fortney, Todd McCall, and myself, Greg Mace, here as High School Sports Live continues on ABC 27. We have more games and another wrestling match coming up. We'll be at Carlisle on Thursday night, and then we've got uh, more in February, and uh, we'll be at Giant Center for some of the district playoffs coming up at the end of the uh, district season, so we we'll look forward to those live games as well. I'll tell you what, we got a nice lineup, Greg. Got a nice lineup this year in the mid pen championships and all that which you've talked about. And uh, it's, it's just going to be a great year to see how it comes down to the wire. You guys have picked some good games to cover. Well, you sit back and you spend all summer long uh, <laughs> thinking about who's got who coming back and what rivalries are there. And it's definitely by, not by mistake, Jeff. You guys <laughs> help us out with that, too. Yeah, you saw a good one on Tuesday night. Well, and Middletown has been working toward this very good season. There's Antonelli. That looked like an NBA continuation there, and Dominic Antonelli is the one that's benefited from that. He's on the foul line. He's got 10 and a chance to cut into the uh, Cedar Cliff margin. Now they got the rebounders, Ford. Gave it right to Hopkins. Now Cedar Cliff putting. Redland putting some pressure on, knowing they've got to get a couple of quick baskets here to even be even close to being back into this game. Lewis and Colts are being nice and patient now. If you're Redland, you're, you're very disappointed. You're upset that you lost to your rival, but there's no reason to be discouraged. You still have one of the best post players in the area, if not the state, and you have a trio of shooters and in the Antonellis and Ford. And, and you just got to find a rhythm. You got to find a way to get those guys comfortable and confident behind the arc to really open things up. And Jim Rowell, you know, we've talked a lot about Scott Slayton and because we're here at Redland, of course, but Coach Rowell, you know, man, Jeff, I had to play against his box and ones and his junk defenses <laughs> and the holding the lead 17 and taking two minutes off the clock. You know, he's he knows how to do it. 3.50 left, fourth quarter. The lead is 17 for the Colts. Advanced Hoops Premier AAU is on the rise. 32 teams last year featuring the top boys and girls basketball players from all over the region. Advanced Hoops offers 10 to 11 player rosters, guarantees playing time, all man-to-man -man style play, and every player gets professional skill training along with top quality AAU tournaments. Advanced Hoops has helped over 50 high school athletes get scholarships over the last five years. We call it AAU with a follow through. Here's a deal, an amazing pizza steal. Get any pizza, pizza for ten dollars, it's for real. So go ahead and ask yourself, what have I got to lose for just ten dollars? Now you get to choose any pizza, any toppings, any crust. There's no stopping any size. You decide for ten dollars, you can buy any pizza, any toppings, any crust. There's no stopping any size. You decide for ten dollars, you can buy. Any 47-30, 350 left. We have a shot here of the bucket board that Coach Scott Slayton, uh, we're going to get a shot of the bucket board. Uh, that Coach Scott Layton, Slayton has put up uh, in the office, of, uh, right near, up under his office that sits above the gym. And uh, this bucket board, um, it's, uh, you know, it sits on the ledge uh, up there. There it is, the bucket board. It has uncommon underneath it. And it stems from a job Coach Slayton had in college. Put it in the bucket. I'll carry it. They have 13 names on the bucket right now. And every year that Coach Slayton's coach, there's one name added to that bucket each year. Last year, it was Billy Will. The year before, it was Adam Keller, who hit the winning free throws uh, when they beat Hershey at Hershey to win a share of the league. This year, it could be Tanner Hubbard, a guy like him. Or, or it could be another player. 
but it's something that uh, each year Coach Slayton uh, has as a tradition in his program. I don't know about you, Jeff, but that gives me goosebumps because he's teaching more than just basketball. These kids, he's focusing more on just the star players that he's had each year, but it, it's on the little things that make a difference. Well, you talk about Billy Wilt and Adam Keller, and you, you're talking about guys who did not light up the scoreboard. Uh, they were not double-digit scorers. Uh, they were guys whose names wouldn't be in our newspaper all that often, but they were vital keys to the to those programs you know the guys who would dive get the get the floor burns pick up the loose balls get the rebounds do everything and anything except scoring that that helps teams win well cedar Cliff's shown some very good execution here in that uh, uh stall game out top but there's john ford making something happen nice steal followed by zan gary for his 15th point zan gary uh trapping in the corner Ford's trying to be tenacious. There's Hopkins. Cedar Club executes well on the other end, and that's what happens when you gamble, you try to make things happen. It's hard to get stops on the other end if it's executed properly. Seven for Hopkins, and the lead is back to 16. If Redland played a whole game like this, it would be such an advantage for Cedar Club. They just have so many more scoring options and, and it's very disciplined moving the ball up and down the floor. Exactly. Exactly. The Keystone Division, I don't, Jeff, I don't know how you see this. You know, you get out to more games than actually Greg and I do. But it just seems to be a division of, of, of zone defenses and tac tactical things. It seems like the Commonwealth uh, maybe not as talented overall with, with the, the bigs and all the overall talent the last couple years but it's more an in-your-face defense you get after it yeah i think uh, traditionally that's been that's been true uh, commonwealth wants to make you wants to make you run up and down keystone is more traditional as far as you know uh working zone defenses and whatnot all right i remind you can vote for the uh, sun motor cars player of the game pa sports live tv.com i think uh for the winning team, I think probably most of us would agree that it is uh, Mr. Colton Lewis. Jeff Marr, would you concur? I, uh, I absolutely do concur. I've been very impressed with the way he's he's battled tonight against San Gary. Uh, you know, a better known player, a you know, Division One player. Uh, Lewis has been fantastic going head to head with him. And I tonight. believe he's coming off a 15-point performance in the last outing. He's, um, a, he's their leading scorer, I believe. Is he? Doesn't he? If he's not their leading scorer, he's very close. Well, he's he's really been picking it up on the offensive end. And, He's been benefiting from the attention being on Stump, the attention being on these other guys. He's like the new kid on the block, and people right. are like, oh, shoot, he, this guy. You know, right. it's like we were focusing on this guy. You already guy. had Hopkins. You already had Stump and Aru and, Ma and Majoke. And then you add somebody with, uh, with Lewis's size and ability, and it, it makes this team that much more dangerous. And, Jeff, you are absolutely correct. He is the leading scorer in this team, just under 12 points a game. Uh, Season high this year of 21 against East back on January the 3rd. Coming up to two minutes left. Both these uh, cheering sections have lots of very creative Duke-like chants. <laughs> if Redlam would were to pull off a, a miracle here, um, and come back and win this, and Gary would certainly be my vote for player of the game, 15 points. Um, hasn't gotten the ball in a great scoring position, but has taken advantage of the opportunities he has got. Just a reminder, Redland has not hit a three-pointer since the first quarter, and they've attempted probably close to 20 since then. The other thing about three-pointers, Charlie, you know this, is the rebounds tend to bounce a little bit and go away from the big guys like Zangari, which might also explain some of his low rebound numbers tonight. Well, Logan there's, Stump. There's Stump with a dunk. Gets the Golden Corral in it. Eighth point is the uh, first slam of the night. Watch that draw replay. Logan headed to 
Gardner-Webb University. I've had many nice discussions with his grandfather over the years. Gardner-Webb is a nice uh, campus down there in North, uh, yeah, North Carolina. Uh, Division one in the, in the Big South. Um, uh, opportunity uh, for Logan to possibly play right away is what the coaches are saying. They need a guy like him. Uh, naturally, I, we have a lot of privilege uh, in our program to work with a lot of kids in the area. That's one of them. Just a great kid, great parents. Um, has a sister who probably set the biggest tone in that family and work ethic. She's a Division One college swimmer. She traveled to Campbell University. Um, Ashlyn Stump, she's currently working with uh, Dana Torres and uh, Ryan Lochte, guys like that. She's a marketing director uh, for their promotions. Uh, very exciting. One more. You know how you can tell he's a Division One athlete? He loves to stay outside and shoot the three ball, and he's one of our area's better long-range shooters. But when you have the athleticism to get up yeah. and do stuff like that, in addition to that outside shooting, you... Well, you Jeff, here's the replay. And this is one thing uh, Logan Stump uh, perfected in the offseason more. Um, always could jump pretty well, but one of the things that in talking to him and working with him, uh, being a part of that, was is going into July, we knew he could hit the three, but can you jump quickly? Because Division One, you can't. You got to be able to do more than one thing. You either put the ball on the floor and shoot. Uh, and, and he's not great at putting all, the ball on the floor yet, and he knows that. And Coach Rowell's been working with him on that. But but if you can jump like that and shoot the three, you're 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 able to provide a role. Well, here's a symbolic Red Sea leaving the gym a little bit early. It's it's. It's, it's their sign to the Golden Corral. That there'll be interesting scene here, isn't it? <laughs> Closing 30 seconds. And this will be a uh, solid victory for the Colts. 10 point win for the girls. Could be uh, 20 plus for the boys. Center clip sweep. Will still be very interesting when they play up at Cedar Cliff. Well, and I'm going to say something right now. This is something I'm feeling in my belly right now, guys. That this team here, you got a young Dominic Antonelli that's still trying to figure out how to lead this team without a Nick Diller supporting him on the side. But this team's going to be back at Cedar Cliff, and, and, and it's important. They're going to remember everything that happened here, oh, yeah. and, and 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 look for their best game to be at Cedar Cliff. Uh, and Scott Slayton is going to light a fire under these guys for sure. There it is. There's the first three-pointer since the first quarter. 13 for Antonelli. Well, it has been a, a fun night of basketball here. Stay with us. We'll have our uh, post-game report coming up. Talk with uh, Coach Jim Rao and Colton Lewis. And this will be a sweep for the Cedar Cliff Colts. 55-36, the boys are a winner. Stay with us. High School Sports Live continues here on ABC 27. When my dad opened Hoffman Ford in 1953, this was the model that you could drive out of the showroom. In the past 59 years, yes, things have changed, but one thing still remains the same. There's always been a Ford and a Hoffman in our showroom. Through three generations, the Hoffman Ford family has believed in always treating their customers with the courtesy and respect that they deserve. Passed on from our grandfather to our father and now to us, we believe these values will bring another 59 years of success. Bigger selection, better deals, Hoffman Ford. There's something to be said for a company that has survived the Great Depression, weathered a handful of recessions, and emerged from today's challenging marketplace stronger than ever. And it's worth noting that success has come while keeping its headquarters and decision-making local for more than 80 years. Perhaps growing deeper roots to ensure strength and stability is an idea whose time has come. We figured that out eight decades ago. Penn National Insurance. CDFullDayCamps.com Charlie Fortney's amazing full day summer sports and activity camp. Second through eighth graders, 10 week option, only $140 per week. Soccer, baseball, basketball, and more. CDFullDayCamps.com
And Vince Toops is the place for kids like me. <laughs> Charlie Fortney teaches shooting, dribbling, passing, defense, and all kinds of fun games. The coaches are really cool. My favorite coach is Lenny, because he gives out candy if we did good. By the way, this is my dad, Charlie Fortney. Foreman and Babs Certified Public Accountants is a full-service accounting, tax, and consulting firm with over 17 years' experience serving the central Pennsylvania region. From taxes to payroll, from corporate accounting to business consulting, let Borman and Babb help you achieve your financial success. Back at Redland High School where Cedar Cliff sweeps. The girls win 44-34. The boys win 55-36. Standing by with Coach Jim Rowell and our player of the game. Here's Todd McCall. Todd. Gentlemen, I'm with Coach Jim Rowell. Tonight his team came and answered. So with the player of the game, the Sun Motor Car Motors player of the game, Colton Lewis. First, Coach, let's just talk about how your team came over on the road tonight, answered. I thought Colton got involved. Seemed like Logan got a lot of guys involved, but I'm just going to let you talk about this one, Coach. Well, this is a very balanced team, you know, and uh, we share the basketball. I was uh, really pleased uh, the defensive effort for, throughout the entire night. And uh, I think the first half, they got us uh, shooting a lot of threes, and we emphasized at halftime that we need to drive the ball at them and get it inside, and I thought we did a great job of getting the ball inside in the second half. Coach, you know, I've known you for a long time. You stepped away from the game. You came back, and you just seem like you still have that same energy that you coach with all your life. I mean, how's it feel just to be back and at the Helms again? Uh, I, I, it's a passion. I love doing it. Uh, the, I got a great bunch of Cedar Cliff kids that uh, are playing their hearts out right now. We're playing very well, and uh, we just want to continue to improve uh, week by week here coming down the stretch. We're going to let you get back to your, uh, your players, Coach, right. win tonight. Thank you. Colton Lewis, you are the Sun Motors player of the game. And, you know, Colton, you really called for it a couple times. You got gone. And one particular shot, I remember, you came to the top of the key. You stepped into a beautiful shot, form and all, hit the bottom of it. It just seemed like tonight you had some things going for you. Well, yeah, Coach told me uh, in the beginning of the game, coming with confidence, you know, I looked at this as, a, as another game, not really as a, a rivalry game since I'm not really a, from Cedar Cliff. But it was another game, and Coach told me to come into it with confidence and that's what I did. Okay, you know, you're chasing Hershey. I just got to ask you one question. The Keystone Division is very tough. I mean, what is just your forecast and what are you guys going to do uh, in this league? Well, I don't think I'm in the right position to uh, say who's going to win, but, you know, I think, you know, <laughs> uh, we're going to try our, our hardest to, uh, to win, you that's know, put everything in. Well, Colton, we appreciate it. We want to get you back there to celebrate yeah, with your teammates. You. It's Colton Lewis. Sun Motors player of the game. Greg, back to you. All right, Todd, thanks. Big win for Cedar Cliff 55-36. Back with a final word as High School Sports Live continues on ABC 27. Advanced Hoops Premier AAU is on the rise. 32 teams last year featuring the top boys and girls basketball players from all over the region. Advanced Hoops offers 10 to 11 player rosters, guarantees playing time, all man-to-man -man style play, and every player gets professional skill training along with top quality AAU tournaments. Advanced Hoops has helped over 50 high school athletes get scholarships over the last five years. We call it AAU with a follow-through. All-State freshman Malia Tate DeFridas tore her ACL in a heated state playoff and her dreams seemed shattered. I tried to come back in and it wasn't working out. I thought that my basketball career was over. Getting an assist from the doctors at Arlington Orthopedic, Malia is ready to attack the hoop this season. It feels good when I jump and cut and stuff. It feels normal and the brace really helps me. To go from tears to a smile, it was, it was, it was just a beautiful thing. For generations, Caterpillar has delivered innovative products that help customers build strong, profitable businesses. And for more than 60 years, Cleveland Brothers Equipment Company has been Pennsylvania's source for first-class Caterpillar equipment, service, parts, and rentals. With 26 locations across Pennsylvania, we've grown right alongside our customers, delivering on our commitment to provide a superior experience and maximum value. Cleveland Brothers Equipment Company, helping Pennsylvania prosper since 1948. Got old electronics, such as a TV or computer to recycle? We've got your answer at the Dolphin County Recycling Center. E-cycling is quick, easy, and free for all county residents. You can also recycle old major appliances and other items safely at our center. Have questions? 
Call our helpful staff at the Recycling Center or check our website for more information. Recycling is now more convenient than ever. Join us in going green to protect our environment. Keep our earth clean and green. Wipe out waste and recycle. And we're back at Redland High School where uh, Cedarcliff has swept both the girls and the boys game. The boys, the game you just saw here on ABC 27, 55-36, the Colts were a winner. Todd McCall, what are your thoughts on why Cedar Cliff was so effective tonight? Well, I thought, first of all, they came over and they just seemed like a, a real seasoned team. They were settled. Logan Stump got people involved. Um, Noel Rue got people involved. Christo Make, I mean, they just stepped up, and, and key players stepped up, and they looked really like a Keystone division-leading team tonight, Greg. Let's talk, Charlie, a little bit about what's ahead for this Redland team, because beyond Zangary, they want to continue to improve. Obviously, Mike does as well, but this is a team with a lot of potential. Well, it's a team that's still trying to find that identity. I mean, Diller started for, I believe, I believe four years on this basketball team as the point guard. I think you're going to find that Dominic Antonelli is going to continue to grow up in this basketball team and find his opportunities to run the team. And I think you're going to see a team that's going to hit some more shots. They were four for 25 in this game. You know, if they make 33% of these, this is a game when it was important to be a game, and who knows what happens. But uh, it's not in the character of Redland Patriot basketball not to come back, and, and, and they will improve. And this game at Cedarcliff uh, is going to be a whole other story, in my opinion. Uh, but hats off to Cedarcliff. They did what they had to do, and they did it in a bunch of different ways. Coach Rao mentioned how much it's such a balanced team. And I think Redland has to catch a little bit of balance, but recognize that they got to run some offense through the big guy because pretty much when he touched the basketball tonight, something good happened. All right, and a great atmosphere tonight. Man, that was terrific. And uh, hats off to the administration, the kids, and thanks to everybody here at Redland for having us tonight. Well, again, uh, the girls win 44 to 34 to the Cedar Cliff girls, and the uh, Cedar Cliff boys beat Redland 55 to 36. Coming up next Thursday, we'll be at Carlisle High School for the Cumberland Valley Carlisle matchup. Todd, Charlie, and I will be there Thursday night, January the 19th, 7 p.m. right here on ABC 27.3. Thanks as always to our Invicta Sports crew. You can log on for video productions for all your needs, Invicta.net. Now for Todd McCall and Charlie Fortney, and also thanks to Jeff Morrow and James Phillips from the Patriot News, Greg May saying good night from Redland High School. The Cedar Cliff girls win 44-34. The Cedar Cliff boys win 55-36. Good night, everybody. Dr. King, welcome to the show. Um, like many of the doctors at Arlington, you have a sports background. Yours in particular has interests me and my neighbor, and that's uh, you played for the Red Wings. Talk about that experience. Well, first I played college hockey at University of Maine, uh, which uh, was right in the time where we were building a, a very strong program, national program. I was a, a goalie there. And then uh, was drafted actually out of high school in, in Canada. and. Uh, got a chance to play three years with the Red Wings. In preparing for this interview, I, I realized myself that the hip area is such a unique concentration. You're one of the few doctors in this area that, that deal with this. Would that be accurate to say? Yeah, there's really, there's really only th uh, three of us that are doing hip arthroscopy surgery and, mm -hmm. and fixing labor repairs and, and trying to change the bony shape of the hip to try and prevent future problems and fix the problems that have occurred. The story that stands out to me uh, the most is uh, regarding hip injury is Bo Jackson. I mean, he was considered the um, multi-sport pro athlete, and all of a sudden his career ended quickly with a hip injury. What was going on with Bo Jackson? Uh, what, what was he suffering from? Yeah, he had a little bit different situation. He had a traumatic injury where he had a, a dislocation of his hip mm -hmm. and lost the blood supply to his hip. So he had something called avascular necrosis where the, the blood supply uh, was lost, the bone died, and so he had to have a, a hip replacement. What's a common injury for um, just high school athletes or, or even a younger athlete or student that comes into your office? There's, uh, there's the classic hip pointers, which mm -hmm. is really just bruises. There's certainly many different kinds of muscle pulls and tendon pulls. 
with uh, adolescent kids, there's, uh, you can get fractures around the hip where it, it pulls off growth plates. Mm -hmm. So there are many different uh, injuries. Uh, and, and that really just goes back to having an understanding of the hip and, and the, all the mechanics around it and, and just a good physical exam and history usually gets you mm -hmm. where you want to be. Is there a difference between male and females when it comes to the, uh, the way the hips uh, are aligned uh, or the uh, percentage of injuries that happen between the male and the female athlete? Pincer impingement that is what the females tend to get. The hip bends up and pinches the labrum up against the uh, hmm. socket and tends to cause the labral tear. Now in a male, they tend to get a bump over the, the ball side of the hip. And that bump tends to come up and go inside and injure the cartilage that wears out in arthritis. Thank you for watching Understanding Hip Injuries with Dr. Scott King. For the full interview, go to advancedhoops.com.